Okay, so now we're live. Cool. So, yeah. Okay, so we can start. We can just wait a few minutes and let people join here. Yes. And then let's start. Yeah, it's live, it's cool. Exactly. I'm going to just uh, check how it looks here. Okay, good. Three people so far. Just going to wait a few more. Yes. Yep minutes and have some patience. Is the chat working? The chat from from the people. Maybe can they, they can write something. Can you write something in the chat yeah. and we know we can see it? Would be amazing. Yes, let's do it. I have another. <clears throat> ah, yeah. I think it's working. Yes, it's a little. Yeah, right? super cool. Thank you very much. Good. Super. People are in good communication. Definitely, I like it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. I have okay. another window open so I can see that also um, people are actually writing on the live chat, which is good. Yes. So we can make at the end this uh, short Q&A. Yes. Okay, so Everyone has a microphone, and if you have any questions, you can write it in the chat, and exactly. then we can get, get going. Yes. So I'm going to start with uh, an introduction, a little bit about myself, and uh, my name is uh, Vanessa Freakman. And um, some of you know me, some of you don't. I am actually 43 years old. I have four children. I am also an entrepreneur, and um, I have been uh, working with uh, Sarah Kleber now for uh, a few months because I was actually uh, for many years wondering what was wrong uh, with me. I did not really know that the hormones really affected my body in this way. And I have been trying so many different diets. Um, people that know me know, knows that I've given up, you know, pasta, bread, uh, I had fruits also at one point. And, you know, um, from a teenager, I've always struggled with PMS. Uh, I always have struggled with uh, fat around my legs and also struggled with um, having a sweet tooth every time it's time to have the period, you know. I could also have pains during ovulations sometimes, and I never really understood why. So um, a few months ago, I actually, uh, a good friend of mine asked me if it could be my hormones. And this was the first time I actually started thinking. And then I started doing a lot of research. And I found a Swedish hormone specialist who unfortunately is in pension. And he told me basically that, you know, I'm supposed to enjoy the rest of this lifetime, you know. I'm not supposed to think that every month is like a dreadful month, you know? Do I know, am I gonna have bad PMS or am I gonna have a good one? You know, this was always something that I've struggled with. So um, then I contacted Sarah uh, as there was the only one else that I could find uh, that was a specialist on uh, female hormones. And it felt very nice also having somebody that is really specialized with this, you know? So, uh, and that is a bit like uh, from my story. And I've been working with Sarah now, I think it's uh, two months, almost mm -hmm. three, actually. 
And um, so far, one thing also that I've been struggling uh, with before I started was like I was waking up really tired. And as an entrepreneur, I felt that, you know, um, I always really wanted to um, wake up with a lot of energy. And this was something that I was lacking. So now I wake up with a good energy and I feel that it lasts throughout the day. You know, um, my body's tired, of course, around nine, nine, ten, I sleep. And, you know, I wake up like really energized the next day. So this is a huge win. Um, I also have not at all as bad PMS. Um, my last menstruation, I didn't even know it was coming. So this was a really a big win for me, you know. And uh, <laughs> exactly. So it was just like, it was a surprise, you know, it's like, oh, it's menstruation. I, I had no symptoms. And that alone was just like, you know, hallelujah. <laughs> so how about you, Sarah? A bit of you. Cool. So basically my history started as a nutritionist and a personal trainer. And I worked in different gyms in the past. And myself, I had problems with weight. Also, I was working out six days per week. And uh, my nutrition was 100% perfect. So I really ate zero sugar. I trained a lot. But I still had problems with some areas of my body that I had more fat than on other areas. And I also felt very, very tired. Um, after I made sport, I had to fall asleep uh, one hour and I woke up and I felt not good. And basically, I also observed on other people these problems that they cannot lose weight or that they feel tired all the time. Or I saw young women which have cellulite with 22 years. And I asked myself, what the hell is this and what's going wrong here? And basically, then I um, was in research because I asked myself, what is the reason for this? And some doctors tell, for example, yeah, if you store more fat on different body parts, it's because of your genetic. So it's a genetic point and you cannot do something about it. You have to accept and that's it. And I myself, I'm not such a kind of person. I'm always looking for the source and the reason for things. And so I came and reached a man, his name was Polykin, and he was doing hormone tests over 20 or 30 years and body fat measurements. And he found out over this 20 or 30 years that basically the body is storing more fat on different points because the hormones are out of balance. So the reason for this are the hormones. It's not a genetic. The genetic is just 10% and the hormones make 90% out of it. And for me, it was very interesting because I always thought if the body is something showing outside, then it's something wrong inside, basically. This was my thinking. That's because I made myself, for example, a lot of uh, squats or I made sit-ups and I was not able to get rid of different body points where a storm of fat. So mm. then I went basically to a coach. This was a person which did the same like me today. And what I liked on the concept is that it's basically totally natural. It goes on natural things. So it goes not on, I give you hormones or something like this, or I give you medicine, you have problems with PMS, I give you the pill or something. It's more to find out the reason why you have these problems and what you can do about it. And this was really interesting. And it, the treatment is also on natural ways. So it's with nutrition, with supplementation, with detoxifications, with better sleep, less stress, sport for sure. And that was in, very interesting for me. And with this kind of way, I improved my own body. And the interesting point was that I was able to lose weight, but I felt at the same time better. You know, it was not this, oh my God, I'm happy when the diet is over and I, I'm happy if I can eat normal in this way. I felt better and better and better. And I had more energy and more energy and I got more the body I always wanted. And now in, in present time, basically, I train less than uh, many years ago, but I have less body fat. So this was also very interesting for myself that a lot didn't mean it will help a lot. 
you know. So, and then I learned this, what I'm doing today. So I learned from this man and I do this daily. I help people basically to bring back the body in balance and to help the body. So not to fight against the body, but to help the body to help himself, basically. This is my job. Yeah, and it, this is something that I think um, it has been at least very successful when I spoke at least to one of the women that you helped, you know? Exactly, exactly. And this is really a win for me because it's a job I do it because I really want to help people. You know, I this is this is my purpose. The purpose is not to earn money or something like this, but my purpose is really to help people, to give them more true information, to help them to be in balance with their body and that they don't have to fight always always against their self. Exactly. You know, and this is really amazing. Really amazing. I think this is good because I mean this is a subject that not many women even talk together about, you know. It's just we learn how to deal that PMS is a part of our monthly cycle, you know. It, we have to buy that chocolate or the sweets one week before, you know. So I think this is something that we are so used to already from a very, very early age. No one basically talks about balancing the hormones out. Exactly. And I mean, basically, not a lot of people know about it. They all think it's normal that we have PMS or menstruation problems or that women have um, menopause phenomena or something like this. Or people think, yes, I'm getting older, so it's normal that I'm feeling more tired and tired. I mean, my, my body is older, but this is not the truth. I mean, it's the hormone system because the hormone system is very, very sensitive and the hormone system is also in communication. So if one hormone is changing, then it has an influence on all other hormones. So yeah. this is the problem. And people very often have no idea which kind of hormone is out of balance or that a hormone is out of balance or a lot of hormones. And so they think it's normal and they have to live with it. Yeah. Basically. I think this is good. Then we covered three, right? Yes. Great. Right. So <clears throat> I have a question, basically. Um, I think a lot of women can re uh, relate on uh, basically having weight problems. You know, they try different diets um, and, you know, we fall from the diets and so forth, you know. So, so what can you basically communicate to us about and give us some education on what weight problem has to do with hormones? Yeah, I mean, basically, the hormones have different functions in the body. For example, they determine how we feel if we are craving for food or if we feel good if we ate something or how good we can sleep or how good we can also detox or something like this. And basically, like I said at the beginning, that if some hormones go out, out of balance, then the body is more storing fat. So the basic reason for storing fat is yeah. the hormones. And what you have to know is that the hormones are not just influenced through the nutrition, but mm. also through, for example, stress, yeah. lack of vitamins and minerals, mm. or sleep problems, uh, or, so, for example, if a woman took the pill to get not pregnant, this has a big influence on the hormone system, basically. And people always just think there are two reasons why I get fat, basically. The one reason is I'm doing not so much sport or I'm not so much in movement. The second reason is that it's the nutrition. And for sure, these two points have an influence on these topics, for sure. But it's not the only reason. I mean, if a woman, for example, took the pill for 10 years to get not pregnant, I mean, she got a lot of estrogens or chemicals which have the effect of estrogen into their body and then they think okay good i took away the pill and everything with my hormone system is normal and that's not the truth because this estrogens for example can be in a body over years over 10 years over 20 years and can have an influence uh, where we store fat or if we store fat or not yeah. so there's much more on this weight topic than just the nutrition and just the sport. And what I also see on people is that a lot of people make the mistake that they just make diets. 
So yeah. it's just a short diet. You know, it's nothing which you say yourself, okay, I have to change my nutrition basically. So they just do it for a few weeks or for a few months, and then they go back to their nutrition like before. And then for sure, they will not keep their results. I mean, it's impossible, you know? Yeah. And this has also a very, very big influence. Absolutely. And I've, I have definitely been uh, one of those. Um, I've done uh, several diets. And, you know, as an Italian, I'm supposed to, which I love bread. I love pasta for sure, you know. For sure. <laughs> the body, you know, that I, you know, my body just does not like it, you know. So it's something I had to really accept. You know, it was making the choice of, um, having huge hormonal imbalance and you know having at least a better than complete chaos you know so basically another question is like what problem zones are there normal where we can you know store fat yeah i mean this is a big topic basically so what you have to know is that every zone where you store more fat has a meaning behind it. So it is connected to one hormone or maybe to a specific organ, like for example, the liver, the adrenal glands like this, uh, or it is connected to maybe a lack of vitamins or minerals. So mm -hmm. some people, for example, do a very good nutrition and they are doing sports, but they still have this belly fat, for example. And the belly fat, for example, has nothing specific to do with the nutrition. I mean, if you eat a lot of sugar, if you eat a lot of flour or milk products, for sure, this can be also a stressor for the body because the belly fat is directly connected to the stress hormone. And mm -hmm. for sure, you can influence this stress hormone over the nutrition, but it's not the main reason why you store more fat on the belly. The main reason is that a person has over years or uh, yeah over years basically a lot of stress maybe mental stress or physical stress or both and yeah. this is the reason why they storm are fed on the belly so this is the reason why people go jogging or go in the gym or eat very well and still have this belly fat and don't know what to do and then comes the fitness trainer and says hey do us a few sit-ups and it will go away and the people notice, no, it's not going away. It's still there. I cannot do something about it. And um, yeah, this is not so funny. I had it myself in the past. So yeah. yeah. So basically, this is the reason why you store more fat on the belly. The hip um, basically is connected to the blood sugar. So it directly has to do for sure with the nutrition. So if you have a lot of fat on the hip, uh, I know a person is eating too much carbohydrates, too much sugar and something like this. Mm -hmm. um, the legs are directly connected to the detoxification of a body. So if a woman, for example, and it's specific for women, men have more this belly fat yeah. and here on the hips, this fat. Women have more these problems. They, they have really fat legs, basically. And this is directly connected to the detoxification and to estrogens, which they got from maybe the environment into their body. For example, mm -hmm. over soy or milk products or over beer or wine, or maybe they took the pill or the hormone spiral in the past. And all this is delivering a lot of estrogens. And then they are storing more fat on the legs. Or women are using basically more products for um, their hairs, for their skin, and something like this. So they have more toxins in their body than men, basically. And this is the reason why they have more fat on the legs than men, usually. Not, not always, but very, very often. That makes sense. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, one thing that uh, I have was also struggling with, and I know many people really struggling with, this is, like, what, what does it have to do with hormones on feeling so tired? Oh, yeah. Basically, this has to do um, very much with the cortisol, with the stress hormone. I mean, I explained the cortisol is the reason why you store more fat on the belly. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. But basically, if you would produce no cortisol, then you have the problem, you have no energy and you would die. So cortisol is very important for our survival. For example, you are in the forest and there's come, coming a, a beer or whatever, and uh, then you produce cortisol that you get energy and you can run away. This is the basic function of this. But a lot of people here have too much stress over years because, like I said, mental stress or physical stress, and it's not the way anymore that they have um, a short time stress and then they can relax again. It's more a chronic problem, always stress, always in the life with their parents or relationship or friends or whatever, always stress. Then the nutrition is not well. And then you have the problem that the adrenal glands produce always cortisol, 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 cortisol. And the adrenal glands, these organs are not made that you produce so much cortisol over such a long time. At and any point, they got tired, you can say, basically, yeah. and they cannot produce so much anymore. And then you have the problems that you get this lack of energy. And the first symptoms for this is basically that you, for example, sleep eight hours a night. And you feel in the morning totally, uh, totally not refreshed. You feel totally yeah. tired. You need time till you come out of your bed and something like this. Or you also have over the day some changes in your energy level. It's going down and you're nearly sleeping on your computer after lunch or something like this. Okay. <laughs> so I think a lot of people have this problem after lunch. So this is basically directly connected to these adrenal glands, and it's a symptom that you produce not too much cortisol anymore, but you to produce too less. And this is also not healthy. Okay. Because if you produce too less, you feel tired. And if you produce too much, you feel totally over overreacted all the time and nervous, and you cannot bring yourself cooling down and something. Yeah. And if the adrenal glands are very, very weak, this is the basically the first the third phase of this, then you have the problem, you have this kind of burnout. And yeah. the doctors are giving the people then psychopharmaca, but this is not for sure the solution, because basically you just have to build up the adrenal glands again, and then you will get more energy, your mood will coming up, you're feeling good, and so you're not tired anymore. I mean, this was now no, the worst case, right? Yeah, and I think that was, uh, I mean, this was really something which I was also struggling with a lot. As I, I'm an entrepreneur, I have quite a lot to do. I have uh, kids and it's school, you know, everything in life where um, I'm really happy that, you know, I was struggling because I would sleep nine hours, you know. I, was, I would always try to fix this tiredness somehow, you know, and I mm -hmm. went exercising you know you can get more energy from exercising and I would still wake up tired so yeah. I am so happy that I've come to the point where now when I wake up in the morning I'm energized I feel really that I have slept I am not tired and this goes on throughout the whole day you know so I think this is uh a huge win, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and basically, you know, I mean, basically, it is normal. Yeah, it, it should be normal for everyone on this planet. It should be normal that you have a good energy level, you can sleep through the night, you wake up, you feel energized, you have energy over the whole day, you are concentrated, you have no PMS, no menstruation problems. I mean, this basically should be normal. But the point is that a lot of people agree with basically things which aren't normal because a lot of people have this problem. So if a lot of people feel tired in the morning, the people say, oh, I'm not a morning person. I need time to to get everything going and something like this. I'm more evening person and something like this. But this yeah. is not the truth. I mean, this is basically the body is made that we feel in the morning fit. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't feel fit in the morning, there's something wrong. Definitely. But we can fix it. This is the good message. We can definitely fix it. Yes, and I can sign under that. Yes. So um, the next question, I'm just going to say, everybody, I know some people have been writing questions. We're going to take all the questions and answer them one by one after we have taken certain points that me and Sarah, that Sarah actually made. So yes. 
The next thing uh, a lot of uh, both men and women go through, that is the craving of sugar. You know, yes. we crave very often sugar. It can also be right after we eat in the evenings. Uh, you know, um, I have done a lot. I've done fitness training. So I know I would, I would say that, you know, the cabinet in the kitchen is talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you tell us about this yeah the problem with uh, craving for sugar i mean it has different reasons one reason for sure is that uh, people have too much stress because then the body is in the stress mode and the body thinks oh my god i need a lot of energy so he's craving for sugar because this is the fastest energy the body can get basically. Yeah. So the reason, the, the solution for this is basically for sure to reduce the stress, the personal stress, to find a way to be more in balance with yourself, with your life, that you react different in, in stressful situations. Yeah. The second reason for craving for sugar is definitely that people have a lack of vitamins and minerals. I have a lot of clients which tell me after one month, oh, I'm so surprised. I don't have every, any craving for sugar anymore. How can this be? And they told me or tell me I had this in the past when I did different diets. I always had this problem. And this is the reason why I gained this weight again. And for sugar. Oh, basically, I hear myself now. <laughs> a double thing there. Um, no, and and now my clients tell me they don't have this problem anymore. And the reason for it, this is because I give them a very, very good multi-mineral vitamin. So because of this, they get a lot of vitamins and minerals and they don't have these problems anymore. So this is one more reason. The third reason is for sure if you eat a lot of carbohydrates or sugar, you have yeah. always these problems with the blood sugar. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. And for sure, if it's going down, then the body needs more of it. Yeah, because he, this is for him like a problem for his survival if the blood sugar is going down. So you get this craving for more sugar. So the solution for this is also to change the nutrition, to put out all the carbs and the sugar. And then basically you don't have these problems anymore. Okay. But it's also it, it, it's also a hormonal problem in the end. I mean, it because the blood sugar is regulated through insulin, so it's a hormonal problem. And also the cortisol, the stress hormone, can have an influence of it. For sure, also nutrition and the lack of vitamins and minerals, but basically it's also a hormonal problem. And if you have this not stable blood sugar, then you get this fat here on the hips. This shows that the blood sugar is doing this here. And it's mm -hmm. not doing stability. Okay, interesting, interesting. And then we have basically a problem which I think a lot of people had, and I, so did I, um, and I never really understood why, and that was actually having sleeping problems. Uh, I oh, would yes. wake up uh, every night having to go to the bathroom, uh, and this was normal for me. You know, it was just like, and now basically I have most of the times um i would say like 98 percent maybe sometimes two percent i can still wake up but we're still in the middle of our cycle exactly <laughs> uh, i would say that you know um 98 percent of the time i don't wake up and i wake up at 6 a.m and i am fully refreshed exactly so so yeah what can you tell us uh, about uh, sleeping problems and why do people have that? Yeah, I mean, basically, that's the same, like I said before, with some uh, menstruation problems or something. People think this is normal that they wake up in the night. And what I have to say basically on sleep is that the sleep topic is the most important topic of anything else. If you sleep not good, you cannot detox well, you feel not good in the morning, you have no energized energy over the day, you have more cravings for sweets. This is also a reason uh, if you didn't get enough sleep, you have cravings for the sweets. So this is basically the first thing you have to fix with a person. And she mm. will also not getting in good shape 
and is not losing weight if she has still sleep problems. This is very, very important to understand. And sleep problems basically have different reasons. So one big problem I observe is that people have too much toxins in their bodies from the environment, from the nutrition, from the water, from the air, from uh, some creams or shower or something like this. Mm -hmm. Or they took the pill, for example, for a time. And we have a lack of vitamins and minerals in general. I observed this. And if you have this lack, then you cannot detox well enough. Or people are drinking too less. This is also a reason. And the body is detoxing in the night the most time. So between 1 and 3 o'clock, the liver is detoxing a lot. And between 5 and 7, the intestine is detoxing a lot. And if you have too much toxins and you have not enough resources in minerals and vitamins to detox well, then you are waking up. So if a person is waking, for example, up between 1 and 3, she has a problem with the liver. Then you have to find out what exactly is the reason for this. There are different yeah. reasons. And if a people, if a person, for example, wakes up between three and five, it's more a problem with stress that the person has too much stress over the day. And then the cortisol is going up between this time and then you are awake. Yeah. So <laughs> this is a reason. And also between three and five o'clock, it's the lung. If you have a problem with the lung, the lung, for example, is also detoxing itself. And if the lung has too less antioxidantian then you also have the problem that you wake up mm. so basically these are a few reasons for this or you have a lack of magnesium this is also a big reason i see of people um, yeah. basically people have the misunderstanding that they think magnesium is magnesium so they are not aware that there are different types of magnesium and these different types of magnesium have different mm. functions in the body so people basically need a magnesium, a type of magnesium, when they, that they can sleep better and detox better in the night. Yeah. And my fa favorite for this is magnesium bisglycinate. This is the name, the type of this magnesium. People very often take magnesium oxide or something like this. You can throw it away, basically. It's not really worth. And a lot of people take also magnesium citrate, but magnesium citrate is more for energy level. So they need the right magnesium for their problems, basically. Yeah, yeah so, I take the magnesium, and for me, it's a game changer. You know, I fall exactly. asleep really, really fast, and I sleep throughout the night. Um, I'm in calm with you if I start waking up. It's also, you know, life can kick in, but it's, uh, it's still, you know, getting the body to stress down and getting all the different organs to actually work how they're supposed to do you know exactly exactly and the, the the body basically i mean you have to know if you bring the hormones in balance then your body is more resistant against stress situations or some difficult situations if you are totally out of balance there can be a little bit stress or a little bit something which is wrong for the body and your body is bam, reacting. But if you bring these hormones in balance, then the body has more stability and it's not so reacting anymore and it's not so easy to bring him out of balance. This is the reason why I re really always say to my clients, let us bring the hormones fully in balance, fully, not just a bit, yeah. but fully. And if it takes six months to bring it fully in balance, uh, it's fine, basically, because people brought their hormones out of balance over 20 years, over 30 years, maybe just over eight years. But it needs a little bit time, but it's really worth it because you feel so good. I mean, you feel so young and everything is working well, basically, with your body. Yeah, I mean, I fully agree. I would say from the beginning until now, for me, it's a game changer and I'm still in the middle of it. Um, but I'm always very much, um, I'm so much in communication with women because, you know, I know that I'm not alone on this. And I know, you know, before I went to you, I can shortly just go into it. You know, I basically sterilized myself after my fourth child because I knew I was finished. And I started having all these problems every time my breast would hurt. 
uh, I would have pain in my ovaries. And I went to the doctors and they were like, you know, nothing is wrong with you. And I was like, but I feel something is wrong. Why am I having so much, you know, I said, I've read a bit about estrogen and progesterone, and I, I seem to be checking the whole list of symptoms, you know? And he basically just said to me, don't believe everything you read on the internet. And I'm yeah. just like, I just paid you for you not to help me. And I was so upset because I, you know, I live in this body every day. You know, I know my perception, I know what I feel basically, you know? And I think we're so many women that have the same, you know, issues on this, that it's just like, it's so nice. For me, I was so happy finding somebody that was just like, you before we even did the hormone test you're like yeah this 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 and basically everything was correct <laughs> even after we did the hormone you know test and so now this is probably a very good uh, question uh, a good the next topic is basically a good one and basically it's uh, low libido problems and uh, I mm -hmm. think that there are quite some women out there, at least the ones that I have communicated to, and I know that I have from my own experience, basically, where if I am stressed out, you know, in life and there is problems and so forth, you know, I was just like, what's going on with the libido, you know? Am I supposed to have it like only uh, a few days a month? You know, this is not um, so good for a survive for a marriage either because you know men have testosterone and with the hormones which are totally unbalanced it will knock down the female's testosterone you know so what can you tell us about hormone and libido problems yeah i mean basically more people have it than we basically think or we believe, but people are not speaking about it. Also, men have the problem, but for sure are not speaking about it. So yeah. we have to see it now a little bit different stated because men have other problems than women. So I go more on the topic of men first. So men very, very often have this libido problem basically because of a lot of stress. So if the stress hormone is cortisol going up, then the testosterone basically is pressing down. This can be one reason. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also the main reason for men why they have this libido problem. The second reason is that also some men have too much female hormones inside their body. So estrogens. This can happen because they eat a lot of milk products or eat soy or drink beer. I think this is one of the main reasons for men always this beer, evening yeah. beer. <laughs> yeah, so they get over this beer, this female hormones in their body. And for sure, female hormones are the opposite of testosterone, the male hormones, and it's pressing the testosterone down. And basically, mm -hmm. this is also the reason why men get this breasts, basically, you can say, because they have too much female hormones. This is the main reason for this. So these are the two reasons for men. So basically, I think the nutrition or what they are drinking and stress, yeah. chronic stress. So basically, men have more stress than women, but women are more sensitive on stress. But men have it over a longer time than women with work and everything, looking for the family and so on. Yeah. So on women, uh, it also can be stress. So it's a survival thing, you know. I mean, you don't want to get pregnant if you are stressed because the body cannot survive if he is stressed with the children, for sure. So yeah. this is basically a, a survival method from the body that you have no libido. But another reason is for sure the problem with the pill to get not pregnant. I observed it on many, many women that they get this estrogens into their body and they cannot detox it anymore. And so this estrogen is raising too much and then they don't have this libido anymore. I mean, estrogen is very important for women to have a good libido, but if you have too much estrogen or you have too less estrogen, then you have the problem that you cannot, uh, you are not in the libido. You feel yeah. not the libido basically. So I think on women, it's more this estrogen topic 
And also another hormone, it's called progesterone. This is for, in my opinion, the most important hormone for women because it let us feel good and we have a good mood and we feel very fine with the world and with our families and mm -hmm. we feel no tiredness and we have no sleep problems. And so it feel, let us feel very comfortable, basically. But yeah. this progesterone can also be reduced because of stress or because of estrogens. And if this two press it down, then you have also not this libido problem. So I think the main problem on women can also be the nutritional libido, but I think it's more this estrogen topic, like I said. Yeah. But, but, but like we said, I mean, basically, it's normal to have a libido. I mean, it's not normal to have it too extreme for sure, but it's also not normal if you have it once per week or something like this, if you are married. Yeah? yeah. So basically, this is also a, a sign that really in, in the hormone, something is really, really wrong and you have to fix it because it's normal to have this. It's nothing bad or something like this. Exactly. Like and, and this is a very sensitive topic because I think a lot of couples come to the point where it's maybe once a week, once every two weeks, you know, and this is just a way of living, you know. So um, when I speak privately with you know friends of mine and women and I touch on this topic you know there's like you know oh I'm not alone you know so I think I think it's a very important thing you know because we're supposed to get pregnant not pregnant pregnant not pregnant you know and then on top of it you have life and uh, you have uh, work you know you can be challenged so I think and also if you if your adrenals are weak this also must also, like affect because it's totally unbalanced yeah. right exactly i forgot it yeah exactly this is also a big topic definitely yeah. i mean it has to do like the stress like with the stress i mean if you have too much cortisol and the adrenals are producing too much of it or they are weak and they produce too less i mean it's the same it has to do with stress basically because they get weak because of chronic stress but uh, definitely yes definitely and basically definitely. and the next topic and uh, this is something for us women i mean we've had pms and menstruation problems since we got our menstruation and i remember when i was a teenager every time i got my menstruation i would be at a fetus position in so much pain uh, and it would always come during the night you know and then after I had children, that went away. And I was just like, you know, yes, thank God. But I still had PMS, you know. So what can yeah. you tell us about this and why does this come? Yeah, I mean, I can remember myself when I got my first menstruation and I had really, it really, really a lot and my also a lot of pain. And I can remember very good that my mother said to me, oh, Sarah, this is normal. You have it like me. This, this is our genetic, you know? And I was, oh my God. No, it doesn't have to be the genetic. It's not allowed to be the genetic. Okay. So, and I also know a lot of people. I also had a good friend and she also had a lot of PMS and she wasn't able to go in her office for two days. She was lying at home and really had a lot of pain. And basically what you have to know is that PMS or in general menstruation problems are not normal. This is not something we are born with and this is normal and we have to have it and to accept it. This is not the way how it should be. It's definitely a sign that the hormones are not in balance. I mean, like yeah. you see now in this in this live video, we always come on these different topics, always to the same reasons, always again and again. So this whole problems, people have tiredness, no libido and something like this, cravings. It's not complicated. And PMS is also not complicated because they have the similar reasons, basically. But PMS um, and menstruation problems have a lot to do with two less progesterone. 
And basically, the reason, Vanessa, why maybe you don't have it anymore so hard like before you got pregnant is because when you get pregnant, the progesterone is going up in the body. This is then how we feel, oh, very good. And our hair is so amazing. And our skin in the pregnancy is so amazing. And we are feeling so comfortable. And the world is fine and everything. <laughs> and then after the pregnancy, the progesterone is, bam, going down. Yeah. And basically, um, for some women, it's going totally falling down. And for some women, not so much. So yeah. maybe your progesterone is falling not so much down. And this is the reason why you have not so PMS problems anymore or pain anymore so extremely. Because if you have enough progesterone, it will cause that you have not this PMS or menstruation problems. Mm. So the progesterone is the main hormone which has to do with PMS and in general menstruation problems. And for sure, this can be influenced through the stress hormone cortisol and through estrogens, for sure. Yeah. So basically, this is one or this is, I would say, this is the main reason. Another reason for having always this pain, this e extremely pain while the menstruation, this has also to do with a lack of uh, magnesium. Mm -hmm. um, so if you give women before their period a lot of magnesium, then they will not have this pain so much anymore. But you need the right type of magnesium. So we need here in this way, uh, a magnesium is called magnesium aspartate. So this is a magnesium which have an effect more on the muscles. So which will really relax the muscles. And so you will not have so much pain anymore. But to fix the whole problem, basically, you have to bring this progesterone and estrogen back in balance. Mm. And this, this is so much influenced over, like I said, over the pill, over stress something like this yeah also so, like what kind of foods uh, you eat you know yeah absolutely i mean a lot of people think soy is very healthy uh, but in my opinion soy is not very healthy for our body because it delivers a lot of estrogens and the main problem women have in my experience i would say 85% of all people who come to me in my office from women which have problems, I would say they have this problem with too much estrogens in their body. Yeah. So environment estrogens, like I, like I explained today. And so if you eat a lot of soy, you create the opposite of what you want, basically. Mm. So I take out the soy, basically, to reduce this estrogen um, amount in the body. Yeah. And I think also one thing which, uh, you know, we're, we get so used to uh, with this whole imbalancing thing that it can also create uh, an extreme feeling of uh, depression uh, when the hormones are all over the place, you know. And sometimes I would wonder is like, why does this hit me now? You know, I have good things in my life, but it was really like it was just it took over you know and this is something where i'm so happy we're getting a lot of balance over because i can be more focused and i can actually do and work on the things that, where i really want to do you know yeah and i mean what what we really have to understand is it's really important um men basically have always the same hormone levels so it's always <laughs> stable you know always yeah. the same and women are totally opposite they are totally this and this and this and one time it's this and one time it's this and the men think oh my god everything is crazy i cannot understand women what's wrong with them but basically it's just the hormones yeah. and for sure if, if you have hormonal disbalances then you have more these problems than normal but for sure, a woman will never be like a man. She will never have always everything stable and always be the same because it's not our nature. We have a changing from hormones while we have our period and something like this. Yeah. So we have to accept that we are different, but not in a crazy way. I mean, if you react really in a crazy way, like with depression or then you feel nervous or you feel aggressive or everyone mm -hmm. is... Uh, um, um, I don't know the English word. Hmm. Everyone is giving you a bad feeling, basically. This is directly uh, connected to very much dysbalosis in the body.
Yeah. But like I said, you can fix it basically. And how I fix it because I saw someone is writing writing this in the chat. I will explain after we finished our topics exactly how we basically can bring it back in balance this problems, okay? Yeah. Great. And then then now uh like you know the end part of the questions between me and you. It's something that all women are going to go through. So first we have the whole period the changing of our bodies and so forth. And then we always end up with the grand finale of the menopause problems. So, you know, oh, it's yeah. the last, you know, congratulations, you won the full lottery <laughs> of yes. it, uh, like imbalance with the hormones, you know, and my aunt <laughs> started, you know, thinking like, my God, I'm 43. Am I starting to have this? You know, this is why I went to the doctor to check are my ovaries okay? Uh, I hear of women who are in the middle of work can have hot flashes, you know, so I'm just like, <gasps> and I heard from the guy, uh, a Swedish doctor, which is in pension now, does not work with this. He basically told me, Vanessa, it's just hormonal imbalance. You can fix this. And I was just like, thank you very much. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, menopause problems <clears throat> or symptoms come because you have over a long time hormonal dysbalances. It's, it's not that the whole life is normal or you are in balance. And then suddenly you have this menopause symptoms. So you have to um, accept and see that if you get this menopause symptoms or problem, it's the problem over a long time. It's a problem over years or, or many, 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 many years back. So... A lot of people which have menstruation problems will get later this um, problem with menopause. And all the doctors are telling women, you have menopause problems because you have too less estrogens. Because for sure, if we go into the menopause, the hormones are changing in the body. I mean, this is totally normal. So mm -hmm. we will have a reduced level of estrogens. We will not, not produce so much anymore. We will also have a reduced level of progesterone. This is normal. And so they say, yeah, you have two less estrogen, so we have to give you now an estrogen cream, or you have to take it in a pill or something like this. Um, but this is not the only reason. There are other reasons. If, and if you just go on this reason, you will not fix the problem with sweating a lot or having these hot flashes in the night or something like this, or feeling depressed or something. Yeah. And I... In my opinion, I think it's also not the solution to give someone a hormone cream or a pill with hormones because it's the symptom treatment. It's not uh, that you find out the problem and how you can fix it on natural way. So you can give some plants which will increase the estrogens in the body. And in this way, with a natural way, you can uh, solve these problems which women have. So for sure, one reason is that you have two less estrogens, but you can fix it on a natural way. Another problem is, and this is a little bit tricky because some women produce their own two less estrogens, but they still have too much estrogens out of the environment. So mm -hmm. you have both, basically. You have two less estrogens from your own production, but you have also too much from the environment. And I had a few women, and she had these hot flashes and feeling depressed and uh, sweating a lot and something like this. And what I had to do with her, I had to give her some um, plants which detox the too much estrogens from the environment. And then she got the problem reduced with the heating and hot flashes and something like this. So it also can be that you have these hot flashes because you have too much estrogen and you produce too less your own. This is a little bit complicated, this topic. Yeah. Um, but this can also be a reason, basically. So I had one woman, she made this, um, this I don't know how it's called, this test, Vanessa, what we did in English, how it's called, this salvia test. Yeah. Exactly. So she did a salvia test before she came to me, okay? And she took this estrogen cream. And in the salvia test, it was shown she had, I think, I think um, 100 times more estrogen than she should have. But she still had these hot flashes and sweating all the time. So she, her opinion was, okay, good, I have to use more or I still have to use it. And I said, no, 
it's totally wrong. I mean, you took the cream, you have too much estrogens now, not too less, and yeah. you still have this problem. Mm -hmm. So this is an example that it's not just one reason why you have these hot flashes. Uh, another reason can be that you have too less progesterone because maybe you had pregnancies in your life and then for sure, like I explained, the progesterone is going down after a pregnancy or you had a lot of stress in your life. Uh, or you have too much estrogens, this is pressing the progesterone down. So this way can be also a reason. And I think basically, or what I see is that for sure, if you are in menopause, it's normal that the estrogen and progesterone is going down. Mm. But on some women, it's going more down than it should. It's going too much down. And if it's going too much down, then you have this hot flashes and sweating and everything like this. So this, this are the three reasons. One more reason is a lack of magnesium. So I give some women a magnesium which they can spray on, you know. Yeah. And um, with this, they also reduce these hot flashes and sweating and something like this. So, yeah, it's very, very inter interesting topic, basically. But uh, it's important to know that a symptom can have more reasons, not just one. Yeah, this is very important. So we can also just come to the conclusion, like the more years of uh, hormonal imbalance, it will also have an effect on how your like, uh, you know, menopause is going to be. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. OK, good. Then we have come to the point where they can can um, ask questions. So one question that I see here in the chat and uh, basically um thyroid the thyroid hormones oh yeah what can you tell us about this um basically <clears throat> in my opinion and experience the thyroid is never a problem in itself except you were born and it's too small from from nature basically then for sure you can have a problem and you have to take thyroid medicine or something like this. But in my experience, all the doctors are working on the thyroid and they tell you your thyroid will never be healthy. You have to take the pills your whole life, the thyroid pills, and we cannot heal it. And the reason for this is because doctors very often don't know that there are other reasons which can influence the thyroid. And maybe there, some of them are also not interested to find out the truth and the reason for this. So they just work on the symptoms and they say, okay, take the pill and that's it. But um, for example, uh, toxins, especially heavy metals, have an influence of the thyroid and can reduce their own production. Um, or also if you have a lot of cortisol or estrogen, it also can block the thyroid that it cannot produce anymore very well. Yeah. Or if you have a lack of progesterone, progesterone basically is giving the thyroid um, uh, like a shot. Hey, come on, produce, come on, produce. If you have a lack of progesterone, for sure, it can make a, be a problem at the end. So okay. this is basically a reason. And what you also have to know is that sometimes people um, have not a problem with the thyroid itself. So the, the blood test is showing they have a problem with the thyroid hormones, but the thyroid basically is producing normal hormones, normal amount of hormones. Mm. And basically you have a cell. I have to, to um, paint it here with, basically. Second. Basically, you have a cell, I hope seeing it here, and this here are receptors, you know, and on these receptors, hormone can go on, yeah, and giving their effect on this. And mm -hmm. for example, if you have too much uh, estrogens in the body, I paint it here, or too much cortisol, for example, this here is the estrogens, and this is the cortisol, so it blocks the receptors. So then your thyroid hormones go on this and they cannot put their effect on these receptors. So then basically you have a slow metabolism, but not because it's working not well enough, because it's here blocking from other hormones. 
So mm. this is also a reason people don't know very often. But in my experience, I work on the fire rate for 5% or maximum 10%. Basically, I help the people to bring these other hormones back in balance. I make the toxifications of heavy metals and something like this. I also work a lot of the intestine. The intestine in the liver has also a big effect on the fire rate, the fire rate hormones. Yeah. And if I do this, basically, very, very often, people don't use this uh, fire rate tablets anymore. So That's surprise, cool. surprise. You know, surprise, surprise. Yeah. So, yeah. so basically, what I want to say is, it's very important to find out the reason for these problems. To go on the reasons, not to treat the damn symptoms. If you have these menopause menopause problems, don't treat the symptoms. If you have the thyroid problems, don't treat the symptoms. Go on the truth. This yeah. is the main important reason, I think. Yeah. Okay. Then um, let's see here. Um let's see here another question is yes. um what was the name of uh, the magnesium which is good to sleep uh magnesium bisglycinate i mean we also can write it maybe in the comments or yes we can put it in yeah. the comments and then uh the another question was basically why always headaches before periods but no other symptoms See not. Uh, I just write it here in the comments. I'm sorry. Okay, I think it's in the comments. So it's magnesium bisglycinate to tell it here also again. Um, what was the question with headaches before period? Why always, why always have a headache before um, getting your period and no other symptoms? Uh, this is directly connected to the estrogen problem. Too much estrogens or too much estrogen effect in the body. You also have to know that every toxins you have in your body have an effect like estrogens. They are not estrogens, but if you have, for example, plastic or you have, for example, heavy metals or something in your body, it has on the cell the effect like an estrogen, but it's not an estrogen. So also women which never took the pill or something maybe have PMS problems like headaches or something. And I also think it's very important to understand that we are all different in genetic. So some women get headache all, all other women get maybe a mood problem other women have every problems you can imagine and so we are very different so i think you cannot say exactly why a person has just headache or just this or has everything but i know exactly which is connected which with which hormone and so you handle the hormone and then the problem goes away very good yeah magic Yes, so let, I'm uh, looking at my phone, so I, I have to put it on soundless because uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, the next question. So Stephanie here has a question, and so she says, so the different hormone deficiencies or access are handled by eating specific things for those problems, or is it just eating properly? I didn't get it. Can you repeat it? Yeah. So, you know, the you ha can have uh, too little of one <laughs> hormone or too much of the other. Do you handle this by eating specific um, things for those problems? Or is it just um, just eating properly? How do you handle that? Ah, okay, good. So now we can also go or uh, include this uh, question, how the hormones get balanced because the uh, other person wrote this. Yeah, exactly. So basic, basically, um, you can influence, I, I keep it in general, okay? Yeah. So basically, you can influence uh, the hormones for sure about overnutrition. So if, for example, you have too much estrogens, you can put out the soy or the milk products uh, or for sure the alcohol or something like this. Yeah. Um, but to be in general, or to say it in general, the nutrition influences a lot the basically blood sugar, so the insulin. But other problems, like for example, if you have too much cortisol or too less cortisol, or you have too much estrogen or too less estrogen, um, I work with uh, vitamins, minerals, and different plants to handle these problems, basically. Yeah. So the nutrition is one point, but you also can handle the other things with supplementations, basically. Um, also with 
life balance. I mean, if, if you are stressed all the time and you stress yourself all the time, you also have to work on your life and on your behavior in relation to yourself, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> But I bring back the hormones in balance with nutrition, with definitely supplements. And I would say supplements for me are one on, of the most important part because I tried my work in 2016 or was it 2015? I don't know exactly. I tried it basically just with nutrition and sport. And I yeah. try to get results in, in not in health issues, but on uh, losing fat. And I made myself the experience on myself and on others that it was not working enough. So the nutrition is one point. But if you have this problem with estrogen, with progesterone, with cortisol, adrenal glands, or you have to make a detoxification, or you have to build up the intestine, For sure, you can also work with nutrition a little bit on it, but it's not the main point. Yeah. And I'm, I'm definitely not a person who says, oh, you have to take all your life supplements or something like this. I mean, this is not my, basically my attitude to this, but to bring back some hormone specific in balance, you have to work for a certain time with these things. Yeah. And if you have it in balance, then you can put it away. Uh, and and basically continue your life. And also one thing that we did with me was basically you saw that I was taking way too much vitamins, different kind yeah. of supplements, and we put it down, and I started responding like immediately, which was like really good. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you have to know uh, every supplement you take has a specific uh, function in the body. So if you're pumping your body completely full with everything, with doing this and doing this for detoxification, and this is for the adrenal glands, and this is for better sleep, and this is for this, this, the body is totally going crazy. I mean, yeah. this is too much. The body feels overwhelmed. <clears throat> and so you really have to find out, okay, what is specific the problem? For example, I see, oh my God, someone has a problem with the intestine. The intestine is not working good enough. The person goes just, Uh, one time per day big to the toilet or maybe every third time. Basically, if everything is fine with the intestine, you have to go two or three times per day. This is normal. So, yeah. <clears throat> for example, if, if I see she has a detoxification problem or intestine problem and then she has a problem with too much estrogen and she has a problem with too less progesterone, what I do, I know exactly first, I have to make sure that the detoxification in the intestine and the liver is working properly. Otherwise, we, we shouldn't work on hormones because the hormones are so much influenced on these topics. So first, I will give supplements on this, but not too much. I just give maximum four to maximum five supplementations for, for yeah. treating something because I had other people seeing they give 15 or 20 or something. I'm like, this is really too much. And then I work just on this and I give just a few supplements for this. And if this is working and we have the end result, then I go on the next topic. I go, for example, on the adrenal gland topic and I give supplements for this. And if we finish this, for example, then I go on the <clears throat> progesterone topic and I give plants for this. But I reduce it, keep it small as possible, and I go it in topic for topic for topic because people have the tendency to go on everything at the same time, everything yeah. at the same time. Exactly. And this, this is overwhelming for the body. The body is not knowing should I detox, should I work up my adrenal glands, should I uh, do this, should I do that. It's too confusing for the body. And we have to treat our body in a sensitive way. We have to find out, hey, what's wrong with him? Oh, how can we support it with him with something and do this? Basically. Yeah. So there has also, what I want to see, there has also be an attitude change in our body. If you have ill health issues or if you want to lose weight or something like this, you have to change your attitude toward your body. It's not, it's not someone you have to find, fight against. This is also very important. And I have one woman here asking, how does one increase progesterone? Progesterone, so <clears throat> it's deepening how low the level is, basically. Um, 
normal is that doctors give people progesterone creams. So the best way, if you need a cream and if your progesterone level is extremely down, that you give someone a bioidentical progesterone cream for a time that it goes up. But this is not the way I like to use, basically. I work with some plants. I work, for example, I don't know have the English word. I have to find it out. I think it's Agnus Castus or something like this. And the other thing it's called in German Trauben Silberkerze. Um, I can write it later in the comments or yeah. someone can write me a private message. Um, with this plant, I bring up the progesterone and the own progesterone production in the body. Yeah. And if I see, wow, the progesterone level is really too low, then I have maybe to use a cream for a certain time. But it's not something I like. But sometimes it's, we need, we have to do it. Yeah. And then the next question, um, one is asking, um, what can you say about getting healthier hair and skin? Um, yeah. The women all about the hair and the skin. <laughs> <laughs> this is the main point for women. All women want it. Nice hair and nice skin. I yeah. mean, <clears throat> this is a little bit of a complex uh, topic because you cannot say like on the topic with PMS, it's this reason. Yeah? yeah, It can be totally different. It, the, what I experience is that one main reason is for sure um, the intestine, which is influenced through the nutrition. So if people eat a lot of sugar, a lot of flour products, a lot of milk products or something like this, this is making the intestine <clears throat> working not properly anymore. Yeah. And what you have to know is that the intestine is basically a um, detoxing organ so this is one of the main function so if the intestine is not working well enough then you have this uh, skin problem and you get this uh, toxins out of the skin because the mm. body wants to get rid of it basically so it definitely has to do with the nutrition and the intestine um, it also has to do a lot with estrogens so a lot of people experience this if they took the pill or if they put the pill away to get not pregnant, then they get also this um, skin problem. Um, it can also be a general toxin problem. <clears throat> it also can be a lack of minerals. So it can be yeah. different things. It also can be a lack of progesterone. And with the hairs, it's similar. The hairs are also a lot connected to the thyroid. So like I said, yeah. um, you have to bring the hormones in balance that the thyroid is working properly and because it's if it's working too less or too much then you have hair problem you lose hair and something like this yeah someone uh, wrote also here uh, what about when you have feelings of being worried is this the adrenals yeah mm, is this a woman or a man who is writing a woman, a woman for sure <laughs> <laughs> a woman i mean worrying i mean for sure it can be a mental problem we mm -hmm. also have to focus this always it's not yeah. always the body it can also be a mental problem but um i think it is a lack of progesterone i think this and maybe also the adrenal glands but it's deepening how the worrying is, sh is showed you know if the person yeah. feels all the time worried or just uh, to certain points of of the week or something or the months so i need more information on this to explain it well yeah and then i have one um one lady here um we are gonna write what the name of the magnesium is um i will also post it on facebook because there are two there are two chats one here and one on facebook but there is one asking basically, um, how can you handle uh, too much estrogen? Okay, cool. Just a short thing on the uh, magnesium. Uh, yeah. If you live in uh, Germany or Switzerland or Austria, uh, I have my own magnesium. It's specialized for the for sleep problems, and there is magnesium bisglycinat inside and a few other magnesium types. So if you live in the near of me, I'm in Germany, 
then you can also write me and I can send it to you. Otherwise, you can Google for magnesium bisglycinate. Then it's just magnesium bisglycinate, but it should also work, I think. Yeah, so, but after ordering it from you, it goes really fast to receive it anyway to from Sweden. It was just because of the corona, it took longer time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that. true. Yeah. So like this estrogen, how does, how, how can you handle that? I know basically what I had to do where I was getting too much estrogen from um, milk products. And if mm -hmm. you're Italian, where this girl is Italian who asked this question, then you have mozzarella, you have Parmigiano, you know, you have uh, cream. We love ice cream, you know. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you always have to look what is the goal, basically. I mean, we all love our food, no question. I also love ice cream and everything like this. But if you just ask me what you should do, basically, first, you have to change your nutrition. You have to put out everything which contains estrogens for sure or delivers estrogens, like we said today in the video. So I think I don't will repeat yeah. it because we said it a few times. But basically, the first step is really to change the nutrition. <clears throat> and the second step is to make sure that your detoxification is working very well, especially the intestine and the liver, because the estrogens have to go through these organs out of the body. Yeah. So you have to make as a second step sure that this is working really well. If you make sure that the intestine and the liver is working very well, I mean, you can also write me a private message after this and we, I can explain you more in detail how it's working. But if you made sure it's working very well, then you can make a estrogen detox, detox and you do it with different supplements. For example, something it's called DIM. Uh, it's, I will write it in the chat. Wait. It's very easy to write. So basically, DIM is D in dolimitan. I think I write it, yeah. yeah. Um, so D in dolimitan is something which is delivered in broccoli or cauliflower or something. So it's very natural. And <clears throat> what is, it is doing, it is reducing the effects of the estrogens so that that can be better detoxed over the intestine and the liver. So you can take such thing like DIM, for example, or it's something else. It's calcium diglucarat. It's also for too much estrogens in the body. But basically, I don't really like it to give too much advices on supplements because if you interpret something wrong or something like this, then you make something wrong and then you will have more problems. So if you need my help or something like this on this, you always can write me and we can see if we can make a coaching or if I can find out what is the problem and what you can do about it. And it's good that you brought up this point because, you know, I took a little bit of them uh, before, uh, at least like, you know, last year. I did have uh, good results also from it. I was doing keto last year and I loved it, you know. Um, and basically what happened somewhere like in the middle was that it kind of like the milk products, my body just went in protest, you know, and I had lost a good amount of weight also, you know, the, the fat on the legs was starting to go away. But then because I also had weak adrenals and I was uh, experiencing more stress in in august then the body just went in full chaos you know <laughs> so it's also important i feel having the right coach helping you because also too much detoxination is not good and yeah. you have to balance also that out because some people like to test on their own and i just know from my own journey you know like uh when um i think it was maybe one and a half weeks ago where i started sweating a lot you know and then you said, okay, give it another day or two hours. We're going to have to change something. Yeah. You know? So it's always good being in communication with, with somebody who is a specialist in this because this doctor that I found here who was in pension, he basically communicated to me that doctors do not read about hormones in their education. So they don't know. Okay. So exactly. they just give one medicine after the other. So I was like <clears throat> so happy uh, 
when everything you were telling me from my symptoms uh was just like you know i was like finally somebody gets me you know it's like did you have my book about vanessa's body it was just like spot on you know and then also nobody told me that having a blood test uh for checking the hormone is not right either you know that it has to be from the 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 salvia salvia yeah yeah and the results we got was basically outstanding so it's really important not just you know testing around because that can also throw out more uh, hormonal imbalance and stress on the body exactly i mean um that's the reason why we have specialized in different areas of our lives yes yeah? exactly. so it also can be that maybe you have the right topic but you have to do something else before you go on this topic and if you don't know this for example like vanessa if someone is taking something to get the estrogens out of the body but the intestine is not working well enough and you have to do it before but you don't know then you will not have the good results and then you think it's it's not working what's wrong yeah. here it's not working so this is also the reason that you need someone and what you also have to know is that for sure if we go on the topic of hormones there will be a change in the body and sometimes you have to go through some things and you feel not so well and not so comfortable and you think oh my god what's going on here and then yeah. you need someone you can talk to and say hey look that's going on what's happening here can you help me because if you have not this person if you have not this stable person um, to ask questions and something like this, then you maybe do the wrong thing and you get worse symptoms or you stop and you think it's not working. And you have to know, you have to go through things. So things coming up to go through things, basically. Sure. This is Great. very important to know. And uh, last question before we end. How does one know if the liver works well? Oh, okay. How does one know if the liver works well? So basically, some people have skin problems here on the triceps here. So I don't know the English word, but they have this. Uh, Vanessa, do you know how it's yeah, called? Like this? Some dots or something, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So if you have here this problem, this is a sign that the liver is not working so good. And what I basically do here in Germany, I mean, I don't, for sure, I don't do it in online coaching, but what I do in, in Germany, I analyze your body. And like I said at the beginning, I know exactly which body point is connected to which hormone, to which organ. So basically, I see exactly then from the outside of your body what's wrong. So <clears throat> basically, I go, you know, through the city and I see people, oh, my God, they have storing fat there and storing there and they're storing there. And it's always, oh, my God, what's wrong here with all these people? Too much stress and he has too much tech toxins and something like this. So there is one, pos um, one thing on the body. It's on the knee. You know, people which store a lot of fat on the knee, over the knee. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you don't see the knee anymore. It's just fat, you know, and this is a direct um, symptom that is something going wrong with the liver. Mm. So, I mean, this is what uh, Mr. Polikin, which I explained at the beginning, found out Yeah, that if you yeah. store more fat over the knee, it is connected to the liver. And it's honestly, it's really working. I mean, I do in my job now over six years and I had so much people. And I always see that if we are doing, for example, a liver detox or an intestine detox, I see exactly that on this specific points, the fat goes away. This is really yeah. amazing Be because the system is working. And I mean, basically, this is the main point that something is working. And yeah. it's cool. It's really cool. No, I, think, I think at least from being somebody, you know, who had all these different symptoms and not sleeping well, not feeling well rested. And I'm on a few months in, you know, and this is like when I called one of your clients, you know, she told me straight, you know, you have to have.